So what's kind of funny is that every record company starts calling Tommy and, um, you know, and saying, hey, we want to sign you. We want to sign every record company. Yeah. Right. Everyone, every major because because Hanky Panky was just killing it. It was killing it. And um, suddenly the record companies would call him back and go, uh, you know, what? I think we're good. I think we're going to pass. These are record companies that had called him like earlier that morning and said, yeah. hey, we want to sign you. And now they're calling him back going, you know, what? I think we're going to take a pass on this right now. Um, what happened was that Morris Levy of Roulette Records. Now, Roulette Records was a hit machine. I mean, Roulette Records, they put out a lot of hits. They were known as a singles, right? A singles deal. They weren't like, uh, you know, Capitol and Columbia and some of these other guys who put out albums, right? They put out albums, but they were known. They were known for their singles. And I think even Tommy James admits that, which yeah. helped him. Which, and frankly, most indie record labels at that point, which Roulette was an indie, uh, were because it's a lot cheaper to make a single than it is to make an album. So Morris Levy was the head of Roulette Records, I think. And, and um, well, there's a reason I'm saying that. And he was tied to the Genovese crime family. And um, so Genovese, the Genovese guys, you know, were like, hey, we, we need this talent. We're gonna, we're gonna, we want this guy. Because of his Genovese crime family ties, they, he got everybody, all the major record labels to back off Right. And he signed he ended up signing Tommy James, which I think, as Tommy admits, is actually good for him. Yeah. Because they stayed out of his way because 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 Morris Levy didn't 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 a lot of labels kind of begin to believe that they're actually like the A&R guy and that, they, you know, they're the guys who are the geniuses with this music. Right. And they want to they want to shape the artist. Well, hey, and, you know, in their defense. They've been making records in many cases for like 20 years. You got an 18 year old kid who's made one single. They're looking at him going, what does this guy know? Yeah. And so, so Maurice Levy essentially and, and roulette records and the Genovese, Genovese crime family, uh, they kind of said, Hey man, do your thing. Just keep knocking out the hits and we'll stay off your back. And Tommy James actually gives them credit. Yeah. He, I've seen a number of interviews with him where he gives them credit. He's like, Hey, you know what? I know the guy was, he, he often talks about Morris Levy as if he came out of central casting for a mafia guy. He had the voice, you know, he had the look, he, you know, had the movements and, um, you know, he's like, but Hey, given all of that, given his background, you know what? We owe him because he allowed us to do what we wanted to do and to follow our artistic direction, which honestly was very productive because they had some of the biggest hits that are still in rotation today yeah. on, on, on stations. And what's, so what's interesting with Levy and I, I'm not independently confirmed this, but at least the, the legend slash rumor is that when they were bootlegging Hanky Panky, Morris Levy may have been one of the people bootlegging that record in the first place because he was bootlegging all kinds of records. Morris Levy owned like 60 record stores in that that area of the country. And so his shtick was he would order some records from the major labels, you know, from Capitol and Columbia and wherever, you know, whatever else. And then he would also have his pressing plants pressing up duplicates, mm -hmm. bootleg duplicates of the same records, and he would put those in the record label, in his record store, so he'd sell half of, you You might buy the new Raiders, you know, Paul Reed and the Raiders record that's a real one, or you might get a Paul Reed and the Raiders record that was literally just like duped off a tape that he copped and then he pressed his own, yeah. and, and but he owned the record store yeah. so he could control the money. So there's there's a good, um, there's a, a guy, and I, we've actually become, very, we've become good friends, a guy named Michael Franzese, who is a former mafia capo who, um, for the Colombo family, and he walked away, he walked away from the life. He's, we have a great art, it might be one of my best, uh, my highest viewed episodes, uh, but Michael Franzese is very popular on YouTube right now, but he, he Michael has a, um, Michael has an episode on the mafia and the music. And it's very interesting because he does talk about Morris Levy. By the way, the Colombo family, they had Buddha records. Oh. So their deal was Buddha. And Michael actually played a big role in running Buddha records with the same types of, they were playing the same games. Um, but he talks about Morris Levy. And he says, Morris Levy, as you alluded to, Morris Levy had a gig um, where he would he would bootleg the records, right? stock them in their stores. I think it was strawberries. Something, like, Something like that. Uh, we'll have to go back. Um, but he had the had the had the retail stores, and he would stock them, right? And then here is the here is how he would play both sides. The record companies would go, "Hold it, man! 
it got a bunch of bootlegs. They're selling like some fake records, right? Yeah. We got to get in there and, and let's call the owners of these stores in, right? And so Morris would then charge the record labels money to quit, to, to pull the dupe, the dupes out of his record stores. And then he would put the the real records in there. So he would get them coming and going. Yeah. So he would he would make money by putting the duplicates in there, right? And then he would make money by having the labels pay him to remove the duplicates. Because he'd be like, I'll solve your problem. Don't give me a little yeah, bit of yeah. money, I'll uh, solve your problem. I don't know how that happened, yeah. <laughs> but I got it for 50K. Hey, if you like what you hear, like and subscribe. It really means a lot. And we would love to have you coming back every week. Thank you.